Good morning, y'all, and welcome to Apron Strings. My name's Gay, and if you've been here before, you know I like to talk a lot and cook and eat. And garden a little bit and play the piano every now and then. If you hadn't been here, welcome, and I hope you come back often. We have lots of fun in the kitchen. We gather at the butch block, and we cook good food. And today, I had some leftover pasta that I had made uh, Saturday. This is Monday. And so I thought, well, I want some bread to go with it, and I didn't have the stuff for garlic bread. So I'm going to make an onion spoon bread. I've made a recipe similar to this before, but you stir everything together. And in this one, you layer it. And it's just as good. And I can't wait to get it ready because y'all know how I am about cornbread. I like my cornbread. So I've already prepped some of the stuff. Um, you need two eggs. The recipe calls for egg whites, the original recipe, but I use whole eggs. A box of muffin mix, and you don't have to use Jiffy. If it's too sweet for you, use Morrison's cornbread mix or whatever. I like the taste of the Jiffy. You need some cheese, cheddar cheese, or whatever, and I generally always use the Mexican blend because I like all the different cheeses in it. A can of cream style corn, a couple of tablespoons of half and half or milk. Guess what's in this? Onion and garlic powder. A whole onion chopped real small, and it's best if you can get a sweet onion like a Vidalia or something real sweet. And I've got a couple of tablespoons of butter in this skillet melting. And I'm going to put my onion in and just uh, saute it until it's clear. I don't want to caramelize it. And I'm going to let my butter melt. And we'll get the onions in. And I'll bring you back when I get ready for that. Got my oven heating to 350. I got my pan, my little 9 inch, 8 or 9 inch, whatever it is, uh, panned and ready to put my stuff in it. I usually use a 9 by 13. But this little recipe says um, a 9 inch, and I can't remember if I cheated and used a 9 by 13 or if I went ahead and used what they call for. So I'm going to be good today and mind them, and I'm going to use the 9 inch square. So I'll be back in just a little bit, and we'll uh, get the onions in the butter, get them sauteing. All right, my butter's just about melted. So I'm going to go ahead and put my onions in and get this show going. a little butter on all of them. Now if you like it spicy and you had some uh, jalapenos or some hatch peppers or whatever that you wanted to put in it, you could do that. But I'm thinking with my pasta that I'm just going to have just the regular onion spoon bread. So I'm going to let these start cook until they're kind of clear, kind of translucent. And then I'll come back and we'll get the rest of it mixed up and get it baked. Just turn it around this way and the stove's right there. Um, Y'all know that the last couple of years has been really tough on Troy before the good Lord took him home. And he wasn't able to do anything like he used to do. Well, my little baby car has not been serviced. A complete checkup. You know, the place where I bought it closed down. And for me to go to a Mitsubishi dealer, I'd have had to go real several miles, a lot of miles. So anyway, long story short, my neighbor followed me out to the mechanic shop this morning that Troy used to use, and they're going to check baby car out for the hoses, the filters, the belts, and my son said to have them check my timing chain or to see how much it would cost to replace it, because that's what usually goes wrong on that kind of motor. He said to them, Mama, you'll be good for a long time. So, the little car is usually one 300000 and I barely have 100000 on it. So, I'm going to try to keep my baby car running and not get a new car for a while. And if I do, I'll keep it to save miles off the other one. So, that's what I've been doing this morning. But I said that to say my neighbor followed me out there and brought me home. And so, I'm afoot today. I don't have a vehicle. April had borrowed her dad's truck. So, I can't go to town and upload this video. So I don't know how quick my internet will upload it, but when y'all get it, just know I made it Monday morning trying to get it loaded for Monday. So we'll see what happens. 
and cross my fingers that they get everything on baby car exactly right and I won't have to be a little bit nervous when I'm driving it because just in case something needs fixing. So that was my thought pattern on that. So while my onions are uh, sauteing, I need to get y'all where you can see what I'm doing over here and I'll get the rest of it ready and then we can get it all in the pan. My June oven just dinged and told me it was hot. So I'm trying to do this in the morning so it won't heat my house up so bad. Y'all, I had a sweet little friend came and I had ordered mini blinds from Walmart because I'm trying to save on electricity and my sunroom had 17 windows in it. Well, Saturday she came and her friend came and helped her and they put up all my mini blinds. So that's going to help on my light bill out there. It's a little darker when you look from in here out toward the sunroom, but boy, you can tell a difference in the coolness. Remember, I had to put a new window unit in and I thought, I'm just going to save on all the electricity I can. So another thing I've been doing, and if y'all don't do it, put floor fans throughout your house because cold air falls and that circulates the cold air. If you have a ceiling fan on, ceiling fans blow the hot air, heat rises. That is blowing it down on you. And I know it's supposed to cool eventually, but I have found the floor fans make a great big difference. And I'm telling y'all, my light bill during the heat that we've been having dropped $100. Now that's, that's awesome. And all I've done different is run the floor fans. Now I keep my air on 76, but that's what we've kept it on always. So I, I, I don't know if the price of, of electricity went down, you know, I don't know, but my light bill dropped $100. So I'm keeping my little floor fans running throughout the house. But I'm going to hush, move the camera, and we'll get on with mixing up everything else. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, I've got my two eggs in here, and I'm going to whisk them a little bit. I'm going to add my two tablespoons of milk. I'm using half and half because that's what was handy in here. And a can of cream style corn. And I'm going to add my onion and garlic powder. Now, I added a tablespoon of onion powder and about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now I'm going to mix this up. Then I'm going to add my uh, Jiffy Cornbread mix in it. Troy never did like Jiffy. It was too sweet for him. But I like it. So today I'm not going to worry about somebody not liking it. If y'all can see the table over there and you wonder what's going on, there's stacks of fabric. I decided that I would cut out a bunch of aprons in here on the bar where it's easier. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of aprons up and do a video of what I have ready available to mail and sell some aprons like that. So a lot of them are going to be just one of the kind pieces that I have. Some of it I bought to make just me an apron, and I never got around to making it. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and um, make them up and sell them. So y'all can watch for that video. It'll it'll be a little bit because it'll take me a while to make them, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try to have a bunch made. Okay, this is ready. So what we do next? We're going to pour the cornbread mix into the pan. Can y'all see? I think you can. I'm having trouble with my vision, y'all. Pray for my eyes. I, uh, I guess it's that macular in my right eye, and it's making everything distorted. And there's, you know, there's some shots they say they give, but everybody I've talked to that took them, didn't do anything for them. So I'm not anxious to try to have shots in my eyes. Okay, I've got my cornbread in here. That mix. Now, I went ahead 
after saying I wasn't gonna, went ahead and caramelized the onions a little bit because I just like that flavor. So I'm gonna um, stir the sour cream into the onions. Maybe I'll put it in this bowl, even though they're. Well, I don't have any pickup in my whole arms anymore. I hate that. I don't mind the numbers, but I sure do mind the what they what age does to you. Pooey. Okay, let me get these onions in here. Whew. Better get a thicker rag on the bottom of that skillet. Somehow I know there's a reason scientifically it's easier for me to hold it closer to the weight than it is out from it on the handle. Okay, there's my onions. Here's my sour cream. And that's good stuff. And you just stir those up together. You don't even have to go to culinary school to learn how to do that. And if you don't like your onions caramelized, just cook them long enough till they're kind of translucent, soft. Okay, so on this, you're going to put your onions on the top of the cornbread mix. So what I'm going to do is just dob them around because I need to spread them out and I don't want to disturb my cornbread mix any more than I have to. A little here and a little there, and then we'll try to make it all meet in the middle. Y'all, I have a little drawer over there that's just full of recipes. And sometimes I'll just go over there and look through it, and I'll find one like this one that I hadn't made in forever that I'd forgotten about. So this is going to be a treat because the one I generally make is just like a, you stir it all up together. So I'll enjoy having this today. And this is good warmed up too. Okay, I got all of that stirred around as best I can. we we'll put this over here and then we'll do what comes next. Been out back, not today, but the last few days, trying to uh, pull everything out of the beds because I'm going to tell you, we've had over 100 degree days here in Texas. Hot. Miserably hot. And so I've, uh, everything, I've watered and watered and watered and watered, and I just can't do enough to keep it. So everything's about burned up. So I'm getting ready to pull everything out of the beds, and I'm just going to plant spin, uh, some, some spinach, but I'm going to plant kale and Swiss chard, lots of collard greens and some turnip greens, and a few mustards, and that's what's going to be my fall garden. I'm not going to do tomatoes, squash, or any of that. I'm just going to try to, uh, well, I'll clean this up in a minute. I'm going to try to screw a lot of greens and then I'm going to can some in jars if I can. I've done that before and boy, they're handy and delicious. So I've got this ready with just a little third of a cup of cheese on the top of it. I'm not caking it with cheese like I usually do. I'm going to get this over there and cook it about 20 to 25 minutes on 350. And then I let it cool a little bit and I'll slice it. Because I'm going to tell y'all, I can make a meal off of just the cornbread. I love cornbread, whether it's baked or fried or hush puppies or whatever it is, I like it. So Mama told me I'd do good in the Depression because poor people had cornmeal and the people that were a little better off had some flour to make biscuits with. Well, their house had corn cornbread for breakfast. And that would have been fine with me because a piece of cornbread with butter and jelly on it, mm, that's good stuff. I'm going to get this over there and bake it and then I'll be back talk to y'all again here in a minute. Okay, y'all, I got it out of the oven, and I'm letting it cool. And if I could smell it, I know it would smell good with those onions in it. I wish my smeller would get well, but I'll be back in a minute and cut it and taste of it. Okay, y'all, this is still warm, 
and I can't wait to taste of it. And I like the part back where it touches the pan, so I'm going to get a piece at the back. Mm. That's good, but I didn't have the onions on that, so give me another bite. I guess I didn't smear them around enough. Let's see what it tastes like with the caramelized onions. Mm. All that needs is that pasta that I was talking about. Or some peas or beans or something like that. But it's good by itself. When you make it with that jiffy, it's kind of sweet, kind of like a dessert. But that's definitely a keeper and something different to offer your family when you want the cornbread. I hope y'all will try it. Um, I probably would do more onions the next time. I did a, it calls for a cup and a third I didn't measure. I just did a big old Vidalia onion. So. If you like the onion flavor, you might want to do a couple of onions. You, it wouldn't hurt. Sure would add a lot of good flavor, but that's delicious. Heard on the news that rice is going to be uh, in short supply. So if y'all are people that like rice like we do, you might pick you up some while you can still get it. Because they say they're not bringing any in from India. And the price is going to go through the roof. I checked Costco and... Sam's and they had some but the prices are up from the last time I bought it So just a heads up maybe get you some flour bag or two of flour extra because wheat's going to be short supply they say And you know when they say stuff like that they make it happen. I don't know if they plan it I think they do or if it just really happens and it's just the consequences of the climate that we have and the government problems with other countries, you know I don't know. All I know is I'm going to be sure I have what I like to eat. So I'm, I'm going to get me an extra bag of rice. They have a big bag of jasmine rice at Sam's. And I'm going to get it, put it in the freezer three days to kill the bugs that might be in it. Three or four days, three minimum. And then I'm going to vacuum pack it and then I'll have it when I get ready to eat some. So I think it's a 25 pound bag. So you ought to see to think about that. It's something for a heads up. Be wise. Get what you like to eat. If you don't like rice, then my goodness, don't go buy some. But if you like rice, you might want to get you some. Okay, y'all, I'm going to um, cut out some of these aprons I was telling you about. Try to get some made ahead. I have a friend that has a booth at Canton, Texas, and she sells school-related items. So I'm going to be making some aprons with school fabric back to school and so forth and so on for especially the kindergarten elementary teachers and they'll have pockets on them there'll be a little bit more with the pockets but I am going to have some school related so if you're interested in that let me know and I will show y'all what I'm making to put in that booth and I hope they all sell the good Lord's blessing me he's on my side he's going before me he's helping me and I'm so thankful to know him there's a peace I just have a piece about life and, and where I'm at in life and I know it's because of my deep roots in the good Lord. He just has taken care of everything. So y'all be sure that you give him a little bit of time every day. Tithe on your time as well as your money to the Lord and he, he'll take care of you. You do your part and he'll do his. I'll see y'all back here, I hope, real soon, but I say that every time, and I'm still in a tailspin trying to get everything done, and then some days, after the particular stuff I've tended to, I just ain't fit to get in front of a camera. So I'm doing the best I can right now, and thank you so much for watching, and watching and watching and keeping my channel going. I appreciate that, and I do have full intentions of just getting back in the groove, and cooking if I have to share it with the neighbors, but letting y'all have some good recipes. But I'll be back pretty soon. The good Lord bless you.